Hey friend, David here from Learn Stage Lighting, and I am pumped today, I'm really pumped, because to cap off Visualizer Month, I know it's kind of been weird, I feel like it's been weird, just because so far for Vis Visualizer Month, we've been looking at, okay, how do visualizers work, how do you work in them, you know, we've been covering really some of the basics of visualizers as a whole, and on purpose, I haven't talked a lot about specific visualizers. Um, there's really been two reasons for that. Number one, um, I don't want to lock this that content into one single visualizer simply because it applies to, to multiple visualizers, um, as you're going to see today and uh, in the next video after this, which should be in a couple days after. Um, and so I didn't want to lock that in. And two, I wanted to make sure that even if you'd never thought about using a visualizer before, that you had a really good overview about who a visualizer's for, how they work, what kind of computer you might need. And once you've thought through all that stuff, then it's time to actually look at specific visualizers and say, okay, how does this work? What do I do? Um, which one is right for me? And so in, in this video and the next video, we're going to take a look at four different visualizers, the cost from free to uh, a couple thousand dollars. And I want to compare and contrast these four visualizers. Um, a couple of notes as we get started. Um, some, some or all of the visualizers um, that I'm using were given to me by the owners of the visualizer, either a demo mode or a, um, or a uh, trial or a free version. Um, other visualizers that I'm going over were ones I paid for. Um, either way, the opinions are all my own here, and I try my best to not skew towards um, the visualizer that I'm most comfortable with, but rather to evaluate them all as their own. Now, I think also, as we get into this, you're going to find that throughout this video and next week's, there isn't like one visualizer that takes the cake. There's not one that just wins and blows the others away, okay? And I'd like you to see that. And so... To start, what we're going to do today in this video is, I know this was a long intro, is we're going to take an overview and look at these four visualizers and just look at the basic facets of all of them. Like, price undeterred, you know, not even factoring in price, because um, that'll be the next video, and, and figuring out who's what's right for who. I just want to look at these four visualizers and show you what each one is really good at. Um, and where the the blind spots are in some of these visualizers, where they're good, where they're not as good. And go over some of the really cool things that these visualizers can do. So to start, let's dive into the computer. And I want to walk through four visualizers today. So we're going to look at Camsys Magic Viz. We're going to look at L8. We're going to look at Capture. And we are going to look at Depends 2. Um, and these opinions, once again, are all my own. Um, but I, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of work testing all these and trying them, but it's been a lot of fun too. And so let's take a look at these visualizers together and you can see what I'm seeing. The first visualizer that I want to look at is the Camsys Magic Viz. Now, um, it's part of the Camsys Magic Q PC software and it's also in their consoles. And from what you can see here, um, it's a basic visualizer that looks okay, all right? Um, the, the news with this one, I know I wasn't going to talk about price, but the thing with Magic Viz is it is free. You can run it on a PC, and if you patch your show in Magic Q, um, you can go ahead and actually send Artnet or SACN from another console and get that in the visualizer. So that's worth knowing um, that's fully allowable and supported um, because I know with visualizers, sometimes people, um, and this is a pet peeve of mine, they use the Grand MA 3D visualizer with other consoles. And at best, that's a workaround. And at worst, it's illegal um, because it's not, it's really not the intention that MA had for their visualizer. And I'm all about if you're using MA, you know, use their visualizer, man. It's good. Um, but if not, and you really don't have any cost to spend on a visualizer, you know, look at the Campus Magic Fizz. Like, it's pretty good for what it does, and it matches up with the console, so you can go in your plot view in the console, and you're able to, to move stuff around in here, and when you do that, 
it actually matches and it does that in the visualizer. So it's really cool in that regard, um, especially if you're a Campsys user. Of course, I'm not. Um, and the other downsides are that the visualization's really basic. It's not super accurate. You don't have a lot of um, extra props or you know stages and things that you can bring in. But at the same time, if you just want to see some colorful beams, you want to see some light, but you don't have budget, you know, to use a visualizer, then, you know, Magic Viz can be a good option. Um, and we'll talk about that in the roundup. Next, we've got the L8 visualizer. Now, the L8 visualizer is interesting. And I chose this one next because it's sort of kind of next on the cost spectrum. Now, we're going to talk about that in the next video um, because truly they these different visualizers use different pricing schemes. And so it's not just an apples to apples price comparison between the two. You really do have to weigh um, your own needs. Regardless, um, L8 is, this is the community edition of the CE2 actually that they've uh, graciously offered me to test and to check out. And it has two segments, which is interesting, onboard control and visualization. So I'm gonna start visualization here. Um, but it's interesting that it offers the onboard control because that's something that I haven't seen in other visualizers before doing this, where literally you can program these lights, you know, any lights you bring into the visualizer and actually send out DMX through SACN or ArtNet. Um, there may be other methods too. And so it's, it's kind of nuts because it's like, okay, you actually can use this as a lighting console. So you could pre-program all your stuff in it. Uh, maybe for a venue that just needed a couple looks or an architectural installation. And then you could install it and have the the onboard playback be the way that you play the show back and have some cues there and, and be done. Um, so kind of really interesting. I, I hadn't seen that before, and I thought that was cool. Now let's talk about L8 itself. So L8 looks like a video game, for real. Um, when you start, you build a new room. That's the first thing. So there's actually two segments over here. There is DMX and there is room. And in DMX, you work with lights and DMX fixtures. In room, you work with the scenery. And I really like that because it just builds in for you. Like you can't muddle up, you know, you can't accidentally grab pieces of the room while you're working with lights. And you can't accidentally grab lights while you're working with pieces of the room. I, I really like how that works. Um, everything in LA, to me, feels like a video game and I'm not a huge gamer. And so if you're a gamer, maybe you'll, you'll find this, um, you know, a little bit simpler, but everything, the, the controls have that ability and that's not a bad thing. Don't take that the wrong way. Okay. Um, it's just different than what I've used before. Okay. Um, many of you guys know for years on the channel, I've used the capture visualizer exclusively. It's what I purchased early on and it's a great visualizer. It, it operates a lot like a CAD program, okay, like a, like a 3D CAD program. Um, and so when I started using LA, when they first let me borrow it, and I did a review actually as well, um, we'll link to that here. When I first used LA, it took me quite a while to get used to it because it broke in my mind a lot of the assumptions that I had made about a visualizer because you know, I mean, look at how we navigate through this thing. It's like, it's like, it feels like a video game. It looks like a video game and that's not bad. In fact, it can allow you to work quite quickly at times. Um, you know, simply creating items in it. We just go to object here. We find a new object. We browse our 3d models. Maybe we bring in a sofa and then we're able to very quickly, very easily move it around either using the mouse or by actually entering numbers in these different fields here. Whoop, oh, we don't want to dump the people out of their seat. <laughs> and, you know, there's a couch, right? Um, how crazy is that? Um, and, and there's a lot that LA can do. Um, it tends to work well, and the visualization looks really good. Let's go to the fixture side. Um, on the fixture side, if we go to DMX here, we're able to select any of our lights. We can click on them. We can use control and shift, all those types of commands. Uh, it's really nice that anytime you select a light, it automatically highlights it. And so you can really see what that light is pointing at, what it's doing um, so that you can work with it. 
these are all patched in here. Um, uh, one of the things that one of the drawbacks I did find was you do bring in lights individually um, into these different slots, and you can go ahead, you browse basically, you find the light you're looking for. So in this example, let's just uh, let's just find some more auras. And then you can go ahead and you can uh, duplicate those any number of times. But when it comes to patch them to DMX, you do have to patch them separately. Um, you've got to go find the channel in the universe, uh, but then you have the option of the distance between them, um, the multiple fixtures that you have in pitch here. Um, and so the, the patching is not the smoothest. I'm, I'm going to say that definitely with LA. Um, but if you can get over that, you know, it only takes a couple extra minutes, you get used to it, and then you're able to, to have a really cool show. Um, and it, I really like how quickly L8 can work. Like, I didn't think I would like L8 so much. And let me just exit out of this. That'll put me back into visualizer mode. Um, I didn't think I would like it, honestly, as much as I did. Um, but as I've gotten used to it, as I've learned how it works and, and become used to it, I realized that um, the visualization quality is really good. Okay, let me switch to a color chase on these lights. Um, and so, you know, the visualization is really good here. Let's just do red and uh, cyan. And so the visualization quality is, is really excellent here. You can see that as I switch between some different chases on these lights. Um, I, what I like in it too, is it really visualizes a lot like your eye um, in that lights don't really blow out or overexpose like they will on cameras. Um, but that's not the point because that, you know, doesn't happen in our eyes. And so I think that's really interesting. Um, it's also worth noting that, um, let me put on a different pattern here. It's also worth noting that, um, you know, you're able to record DMX in here and play it back and, and use that with the onboard control. So overall, um, L8's really cool. Um, their CE and the pricing that they've got it at is really good. And we'll talk about that later. And there is a lot you can do with it. If you have a video game background, you've played a lot of games, um, that's definitely going to help you here. And I, I really like the workflow. I really like the approach. I like everything in L8. And whether I'm lighting floating couches or a band on stage, you know, things look really good in it. And I'm surprised with, with how much I like it. Um, the only real downsides I've seen to it thus far is the documentation, the manual is a little bit rough. Um, there's sometimes you go to a section and, and it's just kind of missing. And um, the other was just that the DMX patching takes a minute or two longer than the other visualizers. But I really like the way that the room and the fixtures are separate in the setup so that when you're working with lights and patching them, you can't mess up your room and vice versa. Um, the configuration is very simple everywhere. Things tend to work as they should. And I, I've never crashed it or done anything like that. Um, that's not to say that I crashed any of these visualizers in my testing. So Ellie, good one. Definitely have enjoyed using it. Um, and so now let us go ahead and pop over to Capture. If you've watched my channel for any amount of time, you've probably seen this stage and this 3D visualizer, and this is Capture. And I like Capture a lot. Capture is a great visualizer. I've used it for years. I think it offers a good price and it works well. Let's walk through just some of the, the stuff you might wanna know about Capture. So when you first launch it, you're gonna see these four views and you're not gonna have anything in your world. Um, you basically have the ability within the three main views um, and the settings is the fourth view, but in the three main views, you have the settings to set these to any view that you'd like top front uh, side or 3D. Um, and you can have them in a variety of views. So any of these uh, windows can be your visualizer view. Multiple can be at the same time, which can be really handy. Um, and they can also be 2D views, which is handy a lot when you're first drawing out your design. Okay. So there's a lot of really cool stuff there. Also, um, you have the ability to move things around. Everything's real world. And the visualization looks really nice. I would say if you have a CAD background like I do, where I spent a good amount of time drawing in CAD um, when I was a young lighting designer, then you'll probably feel right at home with Capture. Um, it, it has that familiar workflow that you might be used to where 
you're bringing items in, you're copying them, and the way that things move around and, and generally are done um, is very familiar in that regard, okay? Um, but that is about where the uh, where things stop, okay? So that's where, where things start to change is, you know, this isn't really a 3D CAD program, but it's, it's kind of a mix of 3D CAD and visualization. And so there's really with capture users, I've noticed that there's really two types of people in this world. So there's people that use capture to basically just make 3D scenes like this. You can do this completely without a lighting console at all attached, um, just by selecting individual lights, you're able to go ahead and turn those on and adjust these various parameters. Now, I'm uh, sending DMX, so I actually can't do that right now, but you get the idea, okay? So the cool thing about Capture is like the other ones, um, you can turn all the lights on, you can work completely offline or attach a lighting console to work online. Both can totally, totally work, okay? Um, and so that's something to be aware of as well. Now, um, what do I like about Capture? Well, Capture, you know, like L8 that I just went over, has a lot of really good options in it, right? In the library, you've got the ability to have all the truss, fixtures, um, different objects that you want, and you can import from SketchUp to, um, I believe, all the visualizers, at least the three paid ones, um, which are going to be Capture, L8, and Depends can do this, okay? So it's pretty much a standard feature at this point. Um, there's a lot of different things you can bring in and the models look really nice and the visualization quality is very good and very accurate to real life. Now I mentioned in my last portion on L8 that the, the camera in L8 or the view is very much like the eye. Well in Capture, it's very much a camera that has exposure and if you have a light that's significantly brighter than the others, you can see how it can blow out on the stage if you bring it up. Now, some would note that that's kind of pointing out the accuracy of what you'd see in the real world or on a camera, um, but it, it can be a little funky if you're not used to it, okay? Um, Capture can do a lot, and I like it a lot. Um, and so, you know, without, you know, in the next video, we'll talk about which visualizer is good for what people, um, but Capture is pretty high on my recommended list. I've been using it for quite a while. I've always been happy with it. Um, their support's always been good if I needed anything, and, um, you know, it works well. Now, one thing I do want to highlight with Capture is if you're an Onyx user, okay? Now, this is currently in beta, but say you're an Onyx user. I'll just switch to a different chase here. That makes things interesting. If you're an Onyx user, Capture actually now supports two-way communication with Onyx. What does that look like? What that looks like is you're actually able to go ahead and as you move those lights in Capture, they actually get entered into your Onyx programmer, okay? How about that? Isn't that crazy? And so it's really interesting that it's uh, now kind of a two-way deal, a two-way street between the two. Um, not only that, and I, once again, it's in beta, so um, it's it's a, it's a Onyx thing more than a Capture thing. Um, so be aware of that. It's in beta. Um, it does work well, and I have used it, and I think it's super, super cool, okay? Um, the other thing you'll note is that, um, is that in, in beta as well is the ability to actually generate a 2D plan in Onyx from what you've got in Capture, and that's pretty mind-blowing. So again, both of these things are in beta for Onyx, so they're not out yet, but if you're an Onyx user and you're looking to buy a visualizer, you know, as much as I like the, the way L8 looks on paper for cost, man, you know, the fact that you can literally generate a 2D plan page from Capture right into Onyx means you can begin your design over in, um, you can begin your design over in Capture, you can move over to Onyx and have it just work. I mean, how nuts is that, right? Um, and so that's definitely something to point out as well. Um, other than that, you know, I've been, like I mentioned, I've been using Capture for a long time and I'm a really big fan of it. Um, every year they update it, the cost to keep your license and to continue updating, it's reasonable. Um, there's a lot of good tools in it and it generally works really well. The nice folks from Depends, also Synchronorm, the company that makes it, also sent me 
their demo, which was great. Um, so Depends actually comes from, I think it used to be a visualizer called Realizer and a program called Depends that was designed basically, I think, for like fountains and water features and pyrotechnics, stuff that is kind of like stage lighting, but a little bit different. And they merged the two together to make Depends 2, which now has a number of different modules you can get, including the uh, stage module, I believe it's called, that includes lighting and things like that. Uh, the, the interface is really easy to use. Um, I, I appreciate with both Depends and L8, the fact that without opening and closing a lot of windows, you can get to everything you need. That's one area that captures a little lacking in. Um, I find myself often opening and closing windows, changing panes a lot in order to get places. Um, in Depends or L8, uh, pretty much everything's included within one window. Again, that is something that if you're on a laptop or a single monitor setup, that can be really helpful. Um, but if you're on a multi-monitor setup, that may not matter as much. So getting into things here, um, Depends has some basic options here. We've got some options here at the top for the different modules. And then within each module, there are different windows. So for example, in the construction module, I have the library that has lighting fixtures, different materials and models, and then my library, which is something that you can create. And so just like the other visualizers, you go to the library, you select the lights, you bring them in to your show. Now, one thing I really like about Depends is that it automatically patches the lights as you bring them in, in the order you bring them. in. You can change the DMX patch later, but I like that it patches them in the order. So I literally opened up, uh, when I was first testing this, a show file that I had in Onyx, and I just brought the lights in in the order they were patched, and then they were patched automatically. So it made it a really a piece of cake for me, okay? Um, and so that's something that's really cool about Depends. Also, it looks amazing. Um, the quality of the visualization here looks really good. And it's not, um, none of them are hammering my computer, which is, it's a GTX 1050 Ti, so that's not the latest and greatest video card by any means. Um, but it's a good one. And, um, you know, it just looks really good. Things are really smooth, and it's easy to work with. I would say, out of the three visualizers, um, especially with this separate CAD view, which is really helpful in uh, Depends. Out of the three visualizers, I would say that Depends is the one that I have had to go to the user manual the least. And, you know, that being said, I'm kind of judging Capture on that because I've used Capture for years. But when there's new features, or even when I was initially learning Capture, like I had to go to the user manual a lot to find things. It didn't work as naturally to me. Now, everybody's different. And I think with something like a visualizer, that may differ from person to person. But I just felt that Depends, as I used it, it was very simple to go ahead and, you know, select different items. Like, look at this. If I go in here and I select a couple lights, okay? So I've got a couple, three lights selected. I could just right click and arrange objects. And then we get this great option for spreading these objects out. Um, nice and evenly, and it's really helpful. Um, by default, changes like this don't apply in real time. They apply when you hit the button, um, but the real time update button is there as well. Um, if your computer can handle it, it certainly works. So, um, super cool. Depends, um, I haven't been able to make it hiccup or do anything bad. Um, I like there, you see there, as I'm undoing things, it shows me what I'm undoing. And so, I really feel um, that Depends is one that everyone that I've seen get into it who's a professional lighting designer really loves it. Um, it's not the cheapest one, but you'd be surprised at the pricing. We'll go over that in the next video. Um, I It's definitely one that I think um, I'm going to spend a lot more time looking in, okay? Because I'm able to work really quickly and really smoothly in Depends. Now, granted, you know, being an Onyx guy, the fact that Elation in the U.S. is the distributor for Capture as well as the owner of Onyx means that, as we talked about, there are going to be some, um, in the future, some real interconnections between the two, and some of that's already in beta. And, you know, it's hard to argue with that. We'll talk about that in the next video. But for now, I mean, look at this. Depends looks excellent, just as Capture does. Things like reflections, um, accurate 
render really accurately. And from everything I've heard and what I see here, um, Depense works really hard at making the most accurate visualization possible. Um, and I really like that, coupled with the fact that I just found it really easy to figure things out and to make use of it. Like, it just, things happen naturally the way I thought things would in a computer. And whenever I needed to find something, instead of going to the manual first, you know, I would just click around a little bit, right click on some things, and usually I would find everything that I was looking for really quickly. So what'd you think? I know my mind has kind of been blown through this, and so that's why there's gonna be a part two, because this was already long enough. Um, so join me in part two, uh, which will be the next video out on this channel, because I'm gonna go into each of these visualizers, look at the cost, and just talk about, okay, is this worth it for you? Which visualizer would be right for you if a visualizer is right for you? Again, you know, visualization is something that's more within reach of anybody who does lighting than ever before, okay? It's more within the reach of professionals than ever before, more within the reach of novices, of beginners, um, but that doesn't mean it makes sense for everyone. Though, for more and more people, it definitely does. And so, hop into the next video, uh, make sure you subscribe here, and head over to Learn Stage Lighting, and I've got a free guide for you. So if you're just beginning with lighting, I wanna help you get started with lighting. We've got a free guide that's tailored right to your type of lighting, and you can download, you can grab it at learnstagelighting.com. Until then, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video where we're gonna talk about all these different visualizers, what they cost, and how you can find the right visualizer for your needs.